This is a banjo, and I have to admit that I quite like it. And this is the cheapest banjo that you can buy, costing just $150, about a fourth of the price of the name brand banjos that you can buy. And in today's video, I'm going to review it. I apologize if my voice is a little bit croaky, but I wanted to make this video anyway, and to be honest, probably not very many people will watch it anyway. It's a banjo, isn't it? If you're not familiar with the banjo, then it is the most peculiar instrument. And I'll start the video by giving you a quick breakdown of all of its many quirks. To begin with then, the most obvious thing is that the body of the banjo is round and it's actually a drum. Yes, we have a drum shell going around the edge with a, like a, Tom Tom drum head is even a Remo drum head, exactly the same type that I have on my drum kit. And you tension it with this tensioning hoop that you screw up and down using all of the bolts that are going around the edge here. Just like a snare drum really, but without the snares. Rotating it around, we can see that it doesn't even have a back. It's completely open. So you can plink the underside of the drum head. It's got this threaded steel rod going through here, which I think is for strengthening the hoop, but I'm not really sure. It's got these things for attaching a strap, but they don't look anything like the ones you get on guitars. It's got a tailpiece, rather like a vintage guitar. The bridge is really peculiar. It's not actually attached to anything. It's just resting on the top of the drum head and held in place by the tension of the strings. If you loosen the strings, it falls off or you can move it around if you want to. It's got a really long neck with loads of frets. Up here we can see an unusual, peculiar looking headstock, at least if you're used to guitars. And yes, only four strings attached here. But wait, as we go further up the neck, we can see a fifth string attached halfway up. What's that all about? The tuning peg sticks out of the top of the neck and looks really ugly and is always getting in the way of your hands as you're playing chords and stuff. The tuning is just a G chord. Listen to this. Whoops. Huh? The top string is higher than the other ones. It starts with a high string, then goes low, with a D, then a G. That's just a G triad. With the fifth, and then another G. That takes a bit of getting used to. But at least it sounds really nice without you having to do anything with your left hand, like this. This fifth string, or the top string, you never actually Fret it, you just let it ring on the open string, like this. I'm plinking that with my thumb. You play the banjo with the back of your fingernails, or with metal thumb and finger picks. Ugh, I, can't, I can't see myself. I've got some thumb picks in here somewhere, I wanted to show you those. play it like this. So that's a strike, a strum, and then a plink. The most normal tuning is G, but banjo players are continuously changing the chord that the banjo is tuned to, like this. That's a mountain modal sawmill tuning, I think it's called. You can even take it even further. Now we're tuned to C. And you've got to relearn all of your chord shapes and scales. What a pain. That concludes my presentation of the many quirks of the banjo. Let's head over to the review part of this video. Well, you're probably asking yourself, why would anybody in their right mind choose 
to buy the cheapest instrument available. So I didn't want to spend a fortune and in fact I don't even really know what the difference is between a good banjo and a cheap banjo. As a beginner you just don't know anything about the instrument. In fact you don't even know what you don't know. So it's really hard to justify spending a lot of money on a more high-end instrument. The other thing is that you can always promise yourself to buy a better model in the future as you progress and start to realize the limitations of this particular cheap instrument. You can go ahead and buy yourself a new premium model when you have the knowledge and the experience. So let's talk about this particular banjo then. Now, of course, I don't have a more expensive banjo to compare it with, but I can compare it to guitars and other acoustic instruments that I've owned over the years. First impressions, the quality and finish of this is absolutely superb. The wooden hoop going around here is extremely nicely finished with a nice wood grain. I do believe this is real mahogany wood. It feels superb, extremely solid and robust. The metal rod here going through the middle to reinforce it, I suppose, feels extremely high quality. It's nicely chrome polished, as are all of these adjusters, which are used to tension up the head on the top. It does have a Remo drum head, which is one of the very best brands of drum heads available. That's a good thing. The bridge looks and feels pretty solid as well, as does the tailpiece at the end of the guitar. So all of the hardware here is absolutely top notch and I've got nothing to complain about. The neck is extremely nicely finished with all the fret work here. The frets don't have any jagged edges like I have on some of my Fender guitars actually. Well, it's a Squire to be honest, but even so you'd expect better. If we spin it over, you can see they've even added a lovely sunburst effect here on the back of the neck which is something that you wouldn't expect at this price. It looks really fantastic and it's extremely comfortable and easy to play. Top job. This little tuning key works a treat. Now we come on to the one major drawback with this instrument and that's these tuning pegs. You can see, I hope if the camera is focused, that these are a open back like vintage guitar style tuner. The problem is that one of these has a really a rough feel to it and a lot of slop. In fact none of them are particularly great. I did some research on these particular tuners. I see they are available for ten dollars for a pack of six so they're pretty cheap and I'm not too unhappy about it because for the price point I expected crappy tuners and that's what I got. Having said that, they do actually work. They do hold the tune and hold the tension of the string, but they're just a bit horrible to use. I'll see if I can demonstrate that for you. This one here is a bit, a lot of, a lot of slop and play in that one. Like, oh, clicks and stuff. I have tried to adjust it, but uh, to no avail. But they work, so I'm not too unhappy about it. And it's pretty much what I expected. Now, this banjo is otherwise so good that I decided to upgrade it. So I bought a set of these. These are Goto. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. It's a guitar brand of tuning heads. So I'm going to replace all four of these. These ones are sealed and much higher quality. This was about 40 or 50 bucks. So it's half the price of the banjo. But I think the banjo is worthy of an upgrade because the rest of it seems absolutely fine. I will make a video about installing these if that's something that interests you. Yes, I know it's a banjo and no one cares about that, but it's the same principle and method that we'll use to install these on a guitar as well. So maybe interesting for some of you guitar players. That concludes then. That concludes then my present. That concludes then my review of this. Did I mention it was a Harley Benton? The model number, I have no idea what it is. So I'll just leave that information in the description if you want more information. Overall, super happy with this. I really can't believe how anybody can manufacture an instrument of such nice quality. It plays really, really well. It's absolutely perfect for a beginner. Can't believe how they can do it for the price, but uh, there you go. Uh, it's the factories in China, I suppose. Don't really know what else to say. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you again next time. Cheerio.
Oh, hang on, almost forgot. I guess you want to hear what this sounds like as well. So here's a little snippet of me playing the banjo equivalent of Stairway to Heaven. It's called Cripple Creek. Very strange name. These banjo players are a weird bunch.